Dear Kafir, thank you for coming up with one of the most incredible concept of games I have ever played. I don't think I would have ever started a YouTube channel if it weren't for Last Day on Earth, and I definitely wouldn't have been as successful as I have been without it. I think when you finish developing the concept, it will be one of the best mobile game concepts the world has ever seen. However, I believe your current method of monetization is not in keeping with the excellence of your game. Furthermore, I believe a better monetization system will not only increase your income through more growth, and the retention of your players, but it will also increase the income to download ratio of the growth you are already experiencing. Even though your games have an extremely high ratio of hours played per download, your income per download is considerably lower than the average when compared to other games of a similar intensity. After looking at the evidence, I think it is clear that the reason for this is because your monetization system is based on the objectives of the game itself. Since gathering resources is part of the game, then buying them means that you you are paying to play the game less, which doesn't communicate the best message. This is not only a huge deterrent to hardcore players because it is pay to win, but it creates a conflict of interest that makes it harder for your developers to focus solely on making a great game. I'm not a professional in this arena, but after doing a lot of research on the subject, the evidence seems overwhelming that if you were able to create a zero pay to win monetization system for your games, they would make more money, grow faster, and retain players longer. There are, of course, many ways to do this and if you would like to come up with your own approach I recommend checking out the video I'm making for developers called the four types of zero pay to win to give you a picture of how to make this work I have come up with one possible approach for you guys that I would recommend using on one of your other projects first to see the results before implementing it into last day on earth step one get rid of everything that is pay to win in order to get the increased profits I'm talking about you need to first offer a truly free game this is because when people think they are getting something really good for free, it creates a fierce loyalty for your game. This type of loyalty should never be underestimated. Look at the most recent games that have exploded. League of Legends had one of the best free-to-play models of their time, which made them grow fast, and Fortnite had an even better one forcing all similar games to do likewise. So in order to do this with Last Day on Earth, you need to eliminate the option to buy any type of resource with real money, and you need to decrease the grind so that people can actually achieve achieve their goals. I know this seems like a bad idea, but remember that this model won't work unless you make the game zero pay to win. Step two, help the ones that are bad at the game. Your game type requires a player to be smart. Some people just aren't going to be able to catch on like others and you need to create some kind of system for them to enjoy it. So I recommend keeping the shop system that you have already set up and making all of the resources in the shop purchasable by coins. Then eliminate the option for people to buy coins with real money. Then give everyone 50 coins for free each day. In addition to this, add the ability for someone to watch an ad every three hours to get another 25 coins. Make sure the ad reset time happens at the same time for everyone so that when multiplayer comes out, taking a break every three hours to watch an ad will become part of the culture of the game. This will make watching ads a huge part of the game which will increase your current ad revenue. Also, players will develop all kinds of strategies on how to best use the 250 coins they get each day. Day. This will not only help players that are bad, but it will further increase people's loyalty to the game because now even the shop is an in-game economy that is completely free to play. Make sure to advertise that no one can ever buy coins so that new players realize that the game is truly free to play. Step three, create options for the business person. Business people have money to spend and they don't wanna grind, but they can sometimes be wary to spend money, especially if the pay options are endless. Limiting how much a business person can spend will actually make them much more likely to spend money. Also, business people are often former gamers that don't have the time anymore, so they are more interested in evening the odds than they are in getting an advantage. Targeting this desire will get you more sales. So I I recommend creating a tab labeled something like for the busy person and including these packages. First, lock the auto button. Give everyone a free two week trial to start, but after the first two weeks, make it cost $1 per week to use. The auto button is all about convenience because it doesn't give you a functional advantage when playing the game and convenience is generally accepted as something you can charge for. New players will not be surprised at all that you were charging for this option. That being said, experienced Last Day on Earth players are going to hate this change because people hate getting charged for something that they used to get for free. So I would again 
then recommend first trying this on another one of your projects, but I would also add ways to earn the auto button. For example, during those first two weeks, allow players to rate the game to either extend the time with the auto button for a month or get 50% off on their first month of premium, which I will be talking about soon. Then create a referral system where each time a player invites a friend that gets to level 30, they get another free month of auto or another discount on premium. Also, you can make some of your giveaways around the auto button since it will no longer be fair to give resources. Second, charge $1 to allow a business person to skip watching commercials for a day. In reality, they're just buying 200 coins, but you are limiting it to the amount of coins that other players are getting for free if they log in every three hours to watch the commercial. Remember to keep the prices in this business section inexpensive because you are targeting business people. Then create a premium member subscription for $10 a month, which includes the auto button for that month, skipping all commercials for that month, and an auto collect feature which I will describe soon. Don't overly advertise this as a good deal. You can mention that it's a $34 value, but a business person will spot a good deal on their own. Rather, you want to advertise that this helps equalize the playing field for the busy person. I imagine you might want to make this $20 a month, but I'm pretty sure you will make more money if you make it $10 a month because as I look at the statistics, I believe you will get more than double the subscriptions at the lower price. Most business people get scared off by more than a $10 a month commitment. Subscriptions won't give you a burst, but it will create a consistent income which will really help you over time. And if Google Play doesn't let you set up a subscription system, then I would let people buy multiple months of premium at a time so that they don't have to remember each month. The auto collect feature should only be bundled into the premium because of its nature. It has two parts and you can add more later if you want. The first one is to make it to where they automatically get their daily rewards added into their inbox. So if they can't log on that day to get their beans, waters, and 250 coins, they still get the reward. The second part is a busyness compensation where if you're too busy that day to play, like for example you aren't even able to leave your home area during that 24 hour period, you get an auto farm bonus. This might make them play less when they are busy, but when they get back to the game they will have hundreds of resources which will make them feel like they aren't falling too far behind. But this won't bother free to play players because they could go get those resources in less than an hour. Lastly, you can move your experience doubler options to this section and keep it the exact way you currently have it. Even though experience doublers give players a functional advantage, they are generally accepted as not being pay to win if the game has an obtainable cap to your level. So if you ever make leveling up too difficult for a free to play player, then experience doublers would be considered pay to win. So that concludes the business section and I think that you will find this section will make a lot more money than you might imagine. Even though they are small purchases, these purchases are reoccurring purchases that are heavily targeted to a demographic that has money. So you will likely get a high percentage of them taking you up on this. That being said, the evidence shows that this section will not be your biggest money maker. Step four. Cash in on the loyalty you have created around your game with skins. Your current character customization system is great. Now that that is established, add new options that cost money. Crazy hairstyles, tattoos, etc. Your motorcycle skin system is also great. Make more skins that cost money like you did in the Chinese event. You should experience a lot more people buying those motorcycle skins because you have eliminated the option for them to buy resources. I have so many theories on why this is, but the real factor that should convince you is the statistics around those other free-to-play games. When the time comes, make a bunch of skins for the ATV and then make the coolest ones cost money. Then make skin themes for players' bases, which changes the looks of their walls and furniture. I have no doubt you could charge a huge amount of money for a really epic-looking base theme. Lastly, you could offer skins for armor and weapons. So for example, instead of having Chinese armor that we can buy, allow us to buy the permanent option to make a certain type of armor always look like Chinese armor. Most of the biggest game companies in the world right now are making all of their money through skins. I personally don't understand it, but the model has proven itself over and over again. From my understanding of how skin sales work, you don't want to do all of the things I just mentioned at once, but rather slowly introduce two or three skins with each update to keep a steady income stream. So to recap, step one, make your game zero pay to win to create fierce loyalty and a pure game. Step two, help struggling players by giving resources, which will create a substantial ad revenue system and deepen that loyalty. Step three, 
target business people with small reoccurring transactions that will help them keep up. Step four, cash in on the fierce loyalty you have created using skins. So that is one possible way to make your game type zero pay to win, and I think it will make you guys a lot more money. But if there is something about it that you don't like, be sure to check out my video on the four types of zero pay to win. Also, I strongly recommend trying this out on a new project or new server first so that you can experience the best results. People have already been able to buy a lot of resources in Last Day on Earth, so I'm not sure how people would feel about you switching to this model at this point in the game. Thank you again for making such an amazing game concept, and thank you for your consideration of this monetization system. Sincerely, Forza.